All right, Robert, thank you. This morning, fire crews holding their latest briefing on fire activity from overnight as more residents were evacuated. 23 ABC's Brenna Rose joining us live from the French fire with the efforts and containment. Brenna? Yeah, hi, Mike. Now that the sun has come up, you can really see the smoke in the air. There is a little bit of ash. As you mentioned, a briefing just took place a little while ago. So crews or this shift rather is getting set to head out there to the fire line right now. I'm joined by Alex Olo, who is a public information officer. And Alex, can you just give us the latest update on the fire? Um, certainly. So uh, as of last night, uh, the fire is now 13,816 acres. It still remains at 10% contain containment. Um, and as you heard this morning, they did get a lot of good work out there last night. There was still a lot of uh, uh, fire behavior uh, even into the night because of the lower humidity levels that we've been experiencing out here. Uh, typically what happens in the night hours is humidity raises, which sometimes moderates fire behavior, and that gives firefighters the edge where they can go a little bit more direct, so closer to the line to get the containment of the fire. Um, this particular fire and the weather we've been experiencing in the last couple of days, those humidity levels have not been raising. They've actually kind of been lowering a little bit, which dr continues to keep the, the vegetation dry. Therefore, the fire behavior is going to be a little bit more active, and that's what was experienced last night. Now, when you say more active as well, I heard during that briefing that the winds could potentially switch this afternoon. You know, how dangerous uh, could that potentially make the situation? Um, well, of course, it's going to be very dangerous because a lot of fires are driven by wind. Uh, this fire uh, has had that, it, um, or the wind has had that effect on this fire. Uh, for example, yesterday afternoon when the winds were gusting upwards of 20 miles an hour, uh, the, the, the fire behavior was a bit stronger, which prompted the additional evacuation order uh, of the Wolford Heights area. So uh, if the wind continues to uh, come in in the afternoon like it did yesterday, then absolutely there's going to be more fire activity. Now, I spoke to a man a little bit earlier this morning. He was looking for information. He left his house, but he said to me, you know, I can't see the fire. I want to go home. What would your message be to those folks uh, about how important it is if they're under an evacuation order to leave? Um, yeah, it is very important. When we or the sheriff comes to your door and asks you to leave, we do really, really need you to go. It's, I mean, I say we need you to go, but at the same time, you know, it's hard to tell you to go when you can't see the fire, but the fire is out there. Um, and we ask you to leave because the conditions changing like they did last night could have potentially thrown the fire down into that area. It's still very active out there. Um, if you stay at home and you don't leave, then you're putting not only yourself in danger, but you're also putting a firefighter or a sheriff officer in danger because we have to come and get you out. I mean, that's part of the firefighter's job is to save lives and save property. And to uh, assist in that by having you go to a safe location and just wait it out a little bit. We know it's an inconvenience, um, but we hope to get things taken care of and get you back into your house as soon as we can. But please, when you get the ask to go, we do really, really wish you would. And that's the other thing, as soon as you can. Obviously, there's no timeline for this sort of thing. Fires are unpredictable. Exactly. What would you say to those folks that are like, you know, give me an update now? Right. Um, well, it, it is unpredictable, and, and we don't know when you'll be able to go back into your house. Uh, the last thing we want to do also for those that are... Um, uh, that are evacuated is put you back into your house now and then in an hour or tomorrow tell you you have to leave again because the conditions changed. So uh, just if you are asked to evacuate, please do so. Alex Olo, thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome. Thank you. And we do have a list of those affected communities to show you. As mentioned, it did expand yesterday. There also is an evacuation center that is set up in uh, Lake Isabella. Should people need a place to go? Some of the folks that I've spoken with, you know, they're staying with family or friends, uh, wherever they can, but there is an evacuation center set up. Mike, I'll send it back to you in the studio. 
All right, Brenda, thank you for that update. Making, make sure you are staying notified about these emergencies in your area by signing up for Ready Kern. The emergency alert system is designed to keep residents up to date and provide information about emergencies. You can register for the service on the Kern County Fire Department's website. We also have more information available on our website. Go to turn to 23com